Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to build a lure. Actually, a lure I've never built before. A finesse topwater lure. That weird looking thing. Right, so this is kind of an oddball lure. I really have never made one and I've never actually fished one. And while it kind of looks a little bit like it could be a crankbait, the tie-on eye doesn't go up here on the head. It goes right here. I've taken inspiration from a lure made by Jackal. It's a Japanese lure and it's meant to be fished very slowly. So this should be an interesting little lure to fish now in the heat of summer early in the morning when there's no wind on the water and you need something really finessey. We'll be making this out of wood and I'm using a piece of cypress uh, that I've had drying in my shop for about a year and a half. Nothing very special about cypress. It's very similar to cedar in that it has a very similar density. It also has sort of built-in oils and a little bit of rot resistant. It doesn't have that nice smell and it doesn't have that beautiful grain but it cuts and sands really well and I really like it. So I'm only going to want this lure to be two and a half inches long. I'm going to cut a piece off of this. That's three inches. Give myself a little bit of working space. All right, a quick trip to the radial arm saw and we're done. And the next step I'd like to do is to cover this surface where I'm going to actually draw the lure. And since the lure is really just an asymmetric sort of boomerang shape. You really can't just draw a center line and go from there. So I'm going to have to draw lines that basically limit the top and the bottom. So I'm going to draw in a box that'll give me the limits of the, the actual shape. Now I've got the length, I've got the very bottom, and I just need to know how deep that lure is in that sort of sweeping arch. And I know just from pulling the dimensions off that drawing on the dry erase board that the ratio between length and height is four to one. And so a quarter of uh, two and a half is five eighths. And these lines don't have to be perfect. Uh, it's just giving me some limits so I can sketch inside of it. And I know I want the highest point right in the middle. So I'll give myself a little tick spot there. And I'm going to draw an arc to that point. And then break it over right there. And I want a little bit of a bulge on the bottom. So something along those lines will do it. The eye being here. Making little lures like this is always so tedious. I really prefer making larger lures, but it is quicker work. So let's go out to the bandsaw and get this cut. All right, I'm gonna attempt to make a precise cut with this thing, but I've got a broad blade on this thing. My quarter inch blade broke. And by the way, if there's anybody out there who knows uh, about tuning bandsaws, I could use a little help. I can't get this thing to cut straight. It keeps wanting to sort of bow away from a straight line and I don't know why. I've tried everything, redid the tension, redid all the, the bearings and guides. The only thing I haven't done is changed the blade, so maybe that's it. But if anybody's got any uh, advice, please leave it in the comments. So I got a rough cut on this shape, but here's where the sort of the shape starts to get a little bit important for how the lure is actually going to float and actually uh, behave. Because it's really important that this thing floats pretty much level in the water with just the top hump sort of sticking out of the water. The rear treble hook hangs so far back that's going to have a lot of leverage as far as getting it to sink a little bit on the back. And to overcome that, I need plenty of girth up here to add weight inside the body. So if this dashed line is the center line of the lure looking down, the head should start pretty narrow. And then at the very point of this belly, it should be its widest point. And then it should taper in a smooth line to the tail. That should give me enough space for weight and minimize the amount of buoyancy of the head so I can get this thing to sort of balance. I've measured the width and set this at half 
and then I've gotten some little spacers so that this pencil rides right on the half mark. I can get a nice center line drawn in without too much fuss. All right, there it is sketched out. And some of you might be wondering why I didn't do an actual template. Well, I would if this were say a crankbait or any bait that I'm relying on the shape for the action. But since symmetry on this thing is really gonna be more aesthetics than anything else, I'm not too worried about getting perfect symmetry. All right, so this might seem a little bulky right now. You gotta remember all this has to be tapered back so it's circular, or more or less circular. So there's still a lot of material to be removed. So let's keep going. All right, I've got it down so that it's within reach of some hand sanding. You can see that I've got it pretty symmetric. It's not perfect but it'll be pretty close when I'm done. And I am gonna do a little bit of carving to get some gill plates on there because I wanna use foil, but still got a lot of sanding to do before then. All right, so the next thing I need to do is to set the location of the eyes because I'll need that to be able to sketch in the rest of the facial features. So I want the eye really high and forward on the head. So I'm gonna place a little X right here and then I'll just match that on the other side. And I'll use this little hand drill to get the eye started so I can get a, a bigger bit on it. And I usually just hand sketch these in and then I'll transfer it over to the other side just by eyeballing it. Just by aligning the, the ends of all these curves, I can sort of roughly transfer them over. And I end up with a pretty close approximation of uh, the same thing on both sides. And now I can just start to do a shallow carve. I'm not gonna carve real deep on this. I just wanna have some texture to put my foil on. All I do is just the classic cut down into the line and then do a wedge cut to take material off. Nothing fancy. But with a little bit of sanding later, a little sandboard, uh, you can actually clean this up pretty nicely. Like I said, a little sanding goes a long way to making this uh, look a little more professional. And with some uh, patience and a little bit of delicate sanding, you can get a pretty nice carve. Again, I don't go for perfection, but a solid mediocre works for me. All right, so all the carving's done, and I've got the hook eyes and the tie-on eye glued in with some fast-setting two-part epoxy. And I put the weight in the belly of this uh, lure. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill that hole and give it another uh, sand. And I want this lure to have a little bit of flash, so it really needs to have some foil on it.
All right, so I'm finally getting back to this lure build. I'm really anxious to finish it, but uh, time is limited. So the next step is to go ahead and put the foil on. And if you haven't seen the video of foil texturing and making these little texturing tools, you should check it out. I'll go ahead and put a little link here above me. So if you haven't really done this kind of thing where you put foil on a lure, the tricky part is really aligning it and then being very careful how you uh, push the foil down on the body so that you don't create too many kinks and little wrinkles that you then have to get out. And it also gets a little tricky around carved areas where you have a lot of detail. And when you start working out these little waves and these little wrinkles, it's nice to use a pencil, something soft but round, and you can just work it really slowly. Now the work around the details, I like to do with a pencil eraser. Just because it's soft, I know it won't cut into it. Now as I get the details in there really well, I start to need something a little harder. So I have this little, this old uh, wire twisting tool that if anybody out there's uh, worked on old electrical equipment, uh, electronics and phone equipment, they'll know what this is, but it's definitely some old school stuff. Usually gives you a really, really nice finish. You almost always get most of the little wrinkles out, and then the rest you can attribute to uh, added character for the lure. Alright, so what I've done is I've sprayed some black into the little grooves and all the detail and this little scale marks. And the idea is I'm gonna take a little piece of paper towel with alcohol in it and just wipe off the excess and leave some down in the grooves. That should do it. It gives it a little more character. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the first coat of clear coat just to sort of cover up the little seams so they don't come out in the final paint job. All right. All right. That tastes terrible. Now it's just a matter of waiting about an hour and then I'll be ready to paint this thing. So now I got to come up with a paint scheme. We'll figure something out. This thing's been in there for hours, so it's well cooked, guaranteed to be set. Clear coat came out real nice. It's nice and smooth. You know, one of the things that always makes me think a little bit is how much foil to use. I mean, I really like the, uh, the reflective quality of the foil, but sometimes a little bit is better. I don't know, a lot maybe is better. I always struggle on how much to use and whether to use it at all. What do you guys think? Do you guys use a lot of foil? Does, does it look gaudy? Does it look cool? I'd really like to hear from all you lure makers. If you got an opinion on it, leave it in the comments. So now before I paint, I do want to give it a little bit of a light sanding. But even before then, I want to go ahead and put it in the water tank. I really need to see if it's going to sit in the water the way I expect it to. That looks exactly like what I wanted it to do. All right, let's go ahead and go to the paint booth.
All right, that gets the uh, mid coat on there and I just need to give this thing a little while to dry and then we'll put the clear coat on it and it's ready to go fishing. All right, so while that mid coat dries, I'm gonna go ahead and dress up one of the uh, little hooks, actually the tail hook. And I'm gonna do that for two reasons. One, obviously for looks, I think just the dressing in the water will kind of undulate a little bit and move around and look like fins. But the other thing is that that lure with that weird boomerang shape is gonna cast like crap. It's gonna wanna go in a direction of its own and probably gonna be impossible to cast like really accurately. So I'm hoping that by putting um, a dressed hook on the tail, it'll act like arrow fletchings and will at least give it a little bit of stability as it flies through the air. That's the theory. We'll see if it helps at all. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a clear coat and when it's set I'll put hooks on it and the next time you see this thing we're gonna be on a boat trying to fish it. All right it's still a little bit too bright out to actually fish this thing. The sun's a little too high so in the meantime let's get some water shots here at the dock. It's almost magic hour. The sun is down or nearly down, but now we have these clouds moving in. So hopefully it won't rain on me. Let's see if we can't catch a fish with this. All right, I've got this on 10 pound braid on a really light action six and a half foot rod and a really this is my smallest pen reel so hopefully uh, it'll be finesse enough trying fishing downwind a little bit big gator coming after it great Look, see the gator he's coming straight this way i don't want to lose my brand new lure Really? How close are you coming? Dude, get out of here. Go away. Hit the road. Go. Uh, he's not afraid. <laughs> Look at this. Golly. Yeah, he's actually following me. Go away. the crap out of me. <laughs> Not a big one, but it's a respectable one. <sighs> oh yeah. All right. Finally.
not a bad deal <laughs> very cool all right well i guess we got lucky the storm went around us the alligator left us alone and we finally caught one it took about 30 minutes all right <laughs> so i call that a victory i gotta go in i don't want to get hit by lightning so i'm gonna release this guy and I'll see you guys on the next video.